Sarah Palin weighs in on Russian history, but can she see the facts from her house? Tonight, Sarah Palin causing a storm for taking exception with President Obama's State of the Union address, but getting on our radar for kind of mangling history. Listen. His theme last night in the State of the Union was the WTF, you know, winning the future. And I thought, okay, that acronym, spot on. There were a lot of WTF moments throughout that speech. WTF, in case you're wondering what that shorthand is for, it's for WTF. If you're a kid, ask your parents, they can explain. <laughs> parents, if you don't understand, go ask your children, they'll tell you. <laughs> I can't help you. In any case, Governor Palin's taking some heat for that, uh, but it's really a matter of taste and opinion. But keeping them honest, we're interested in the hard facts and what she said about this. A half a century ago, when the Soviets beat us into space with the launch of a satellite called Sputnik, we had no idea how we would beat them to the moon. The science wasn't even there yet. NASA didn't exist. But after investing in better research and education, we didn't just surpass the Soviets. We unleashed a wave of innovation that created new industries and millions of new jobs. This is our generation's Sputnik moment. So that was President Obama on Tuesday night. Now, here was the Palin reaction. That was another one of those WTF moments that when he uh, has so often repeated this Sputnik moment that uh, he would aspire Americans to celebrate. And he needs to remember that uh, what happened back then with the former communist USSR and their victory in that uh, race to space, yeah, they won, but they also incurred so much debt at the time that it, it resulted in the inevitable collapse of the Soviet Union. Okay, it's a little hard to make <laughs> much of that statement because it's not exactly very clear what she's talking about. If she literally means that Sputnik bankrupted the Soviet Union and led to its collapse, then, well, that makes no sense at all because Sputnik went up, if you remember, October 4th, 1957. The Soviet Union dissolved in December 1991, <laughs> span of 34 years. Uh, that couldn't have bankrupted them. They still had money for a manned space program. So maybe, in fact, she's talking about the race into orbit. Good Lord, ride all the way. Godspeed, John Glenn. Godspeed, John Glenn. John Glenn, the second to orbit the Earth. Yuri Karen was the first. That was 30 years before the USR, USSR collapse. That did not bankrupt them. They still had money for more space flight. So maybe, in fact, she's talking about this. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. That was a great speech. Lunar program, that could be a budget buster, of course. Hard numbers are hard to come by because the Soviet program was cloaked in secrecy. But according to NASA, our own manned space program cost about $23 billion from the first man in space to the last man on the moon. And according to a leading space historian, Soviet spending was just about half that amount. So it's hard to see how a space spending would be a major burden, especially when you consider all the other things they were spending money on. Funding Cuba, occupying Eastern Europe, invading Afghanistan, building the Berlin Wall. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. That was President Ronald Reagan, of course. Six presidents, three decades after Sputnik went into orbit. The man, just a few days ago, uh, she credited for the Soviet Union's end. Under his leadership, she writes in USA Today, we won the Cold War without firing a single shot or apparently launching a single rocket. More now on the facts and the politics of what Sarah Palin said with Democratic strategist Maria Cardona and Republican strategist Ed Rollins and also Stephen Cohen. He's professor of Russian studies and history at New York University. He's also the author of The Victim's Return, Survivors of the Gulag After Stalin. Nice to see you all. Let's begin with you, Stephen, because I want to start with the history thing. That was I kind do know what WTF means because <laughs> when I left home I, knew I, you did. I asked my 19-year-old daughter and she told me. So Before the I show, am, I'm in she filled you in. I'm glad yeah. to hear that. Um, History 101. There's this big span of time, 34 years, between Sputnik and the collapse of the Soviet Union. So when Sarah Palin says, in fact, one was linked to the other, is that true? I'm not a Palin fan. 
Uh, I'm not asking you whether you are or not. not. I want to know if historically it's true or not. It's not the dumbest thing that's been said about the end of the Soviet Union. I think what she wanted to say was that the Soviet Union spent so much money that it bankrupted itself and it ended. And that investments, as in Sputnik, were the beginning of that bankruptcy. That's wrong on two counts. First of all, actually, 1957, which Ed and I remember very well. I mean, and it was a scary moment. I was 50. <laughs> we remember it because they made us, when it happened, they made all American school children study more math and science. And it was really a traumatic moment. Getting my downfall. <laughs> That's how we ended up here. Right? <laughs> uh, it, it, what Governor Palin said is wrong in, in two respects. First of all, actually, 1957, when Sputnik went up, and for about the next 10 years was the high point of the strength of the Soviet economy, both in terms of economic growth, it grew I think at about 6 or 7% a year, and its technological development. That's why the United States had such an allergic reaction. The reaction was, I think, oh my God, the right. communists can do it and we can't, right. something's wrong, we've got to fix it. Right. So she's wrong on that count. It wasn't bankruptcy and it didn't lead to bankruptcy. The other thing she's wrong about, but it's not crazy, because a lot of people think this, is that the failure of the Soviet economy ended the Soviet Union. That too is not correct, but that's a different story. So what I would say is she's wrong on both accounts, but this is the 20th anniversary of the end of the Soviet Union, 2011, and you're gonna hear a lot of really foolish things said in the United States this year. This is kind of, she's the first out of the paddock. <laughs> and that's sort of a dubious honor, isn't it, Ed it's, it's I mean, when you hear these remarks, and actually we report on them all the time, right. what do you think? Is it building the brand well, that it's, Sarah Palin maybe for a presidential no, run no, or no, what? No, it clearly is showing that she has a lack of knowledge, which I think is unfortunate in a, in a candidate, no matter how effective she may think she is. In this particular case, we didn't lose the space race. Uh, it was an extraordinary time for both the Soviet Union and for us. Uh, it was one of the greatest times of development, of research and development for the United States. Uh, and all the sidebar things that came, the computers, the lasers, all the rest of it, it was an extraordinary investment uh, of, of resources and created a great engineering. I think if anything destroyed the Soviet Union, it was their attempt to expand throughout the world and their tremendous amount of resources devoted to military. Maria, quick question for you about the brilliance of Sarah Palin, which is <laughs> you can be totally wrong and yet people devote segments talking about sort of what you're saying, even though we should be running a disclaimer. That was totally wrong. <laughs> that, that's exactly right, Soledad. You know, a lot of people like to think that she's crazy. I often say that she's crazy like a fox in terms of she knows that exactly what she's doing in terms of marketing her own brand. The question is whether she actually really wants to use that brand to run for president. I never thought that she really did because these things that she says, which are completely WTF moments for us, uh, don't help that brand in terms of having people taking her more seriously for running for president. But you said it. Look at what we're doing. We're devoting a whole panel talking about what she said. And to her supporters, that actually, I think, makes them love her more. Hmm. You have said, Maria, that you would love to see a, um, a Palin uh, Bachman ticket. <laughs> and I, I won't go into what Michelle Bachman said, which actually I almost fell off my couch laughing. <laughs> Google it because I don't have time to get to it. But it's, it's so wrong in history. And I'm not a historian. It's just craziness. It, yeah, th th that's exactly right. And, and, I think, and I think that the two together, again, make us talk more about them than it does about the seriousness of conservative Republican ideas. And I think in that sense, and, and I think maybe Ed would agree with me here, and, and I know that other serious conservative Republicans agree, that she does not do the party any good. Well, let's ask she doesn't uh, do the, uh, debate uh, the man good. who knows about conservative well, the, Republican the, the, ideas. The, the sad part is the pres president gave a speech that obviously uh, was a very bipartisan speech, a lot of things that Republicans are going to agree on. Equally as important, sort of a new star of the Republican Party, Paul Ryan gave the counter speech, and he's going to be a very important player here. He's the one we should be talking mm -hmm. about tonight, and, and yet we're talking about Sarah Palin saying something very stupid. Uh, and I think the key thing So here, his message is lost. His message is lost, and she's not a part of the process today. She's a part of the, of the sidebar. Uh, Michelle Bachman obviously is a member of Congress and a, and a representative of the Tea Party. But at the end of the day, we have to get our serious players out front and talking about things that matter to be the alternative to the president and the Democrats. Ultimately, Professor Cohen, I always wonder, do historians just love, I mean, everyone's researching Sputnik. That's got to be pretty exciting for you. <laughs> 
Well, you know, a lot of yeah, well, it, 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 it's more autobiographical, as I said, and I remember when it went up. But a lot of things happened after that. You have to remember that in 1961, I think, uh, the Soviet Union sent up the first man in space, a man by the name of Yuri Gagarin. That was actually considered more sensational than Sputnik, which had reminded me before the broadcast was weighed 20 pounds. That was about the size of a volleyball. Right, right. But when they sent a human being, this, this very brave Soviet astronaut, Gagarin up, and he remains a hero in Russia today, that really brought it home that they that they'd put a man in space. There's one other thing I would say as a historian and a biographer, because I've written biography. What television has done in the United States and probably in other countries partly too, is confuse celebrity with political leadership. I mean, when you become famous and celebrated for something but in politics, why, that's, that's it's confused with, with, with leadership. Right so I can make sure everybody understands. All right, we're out of time. Maria, I want to thank you. She's joining us <laughs> thank from you, DC. Solidarity. And of course, it's Great. always nice thank, to see you, Professor Cohen. Thanks Appreciate for being it. with us. Thank Appreciate you. it.